Hello, welcome to part three of the mystery, that garden quilt. I hope you're having fun in your garden. I've been having a huge amount of fun in my garden. We're doing um, quite a bit of applique. I did mention that it was going to be an applique quilt. And yes, some of the bits are quite small, but I think that they're quite manageable. So in our garden, we've already made two panels of our garden. And today in our part three, we're going to make a third panel. So in your pattern that you can download from my website, gourmetquilter.com under mystery quilts, um, this is part three, there's loads of applique shapes for you to trace. Um, there's some that have to be joined. It says join here, so I'm sure you can manage to do that sort of thing. Um, but initially, I'll just quickly show you the panel that we're doing for part three. So I've already ironed mine on. It's all cut out and ironed on, but I haven't uh, yet done all my stitching. So I just thought I'd show you, this is what we're doing um, in this part. Some delicious roses. Now, they may not look like roses in other people's gardens, but I have mentioned before, I'm not a gardener, and these are my roses. So they're already ironed on. There's a few little creepy crawlies I noticed just creeping into my garden with this little ladybird happening here. Um, but I do like a ladybird in the garden, so that's really good. So that's all ready for me to stitch, so I'm going to go away and stitch that. But I'll just quickly show you, because there's a few applique shapes that we haven't used yet, that uh, were in the pattern for you to cut out. So what we're going to do now is go back to part one and two of the panels that you've already made, and we're going to join them together. And I've already joined mine, but I haven't done the rest of it yet, but I've joined them up. So I've got... My, my seam right up there. So your part one is on your right on my left and part two is here. And we're actually going to do some applique right over that seam line. So just the normal quarter inch seam which has been allowed in your cutting. But I would suggest that you press your seams open so that you get a nice flat area because we're stitching over the top. Now I don't often press my seams open but it seemed like a good idea on this occasion. So I'll just quickly show you what I've done here. So this little part of the garden is largely of my imagining and it's uh, these shapes that we're using here um, and it's it's a, a pod. I didn't know what else it was and I questioned my fount of all knowledge and he assured me that it was a pod. So what we're going to do here is this is the seam line. I'm not sure if you can see all that and I'll just quickly press some of these bits in place. So the pod has a stem, so I've already cut my stem to length and I'm going to place it right over the top of the seam line because we're going to stitch it in place right there and I'll just iron it on. It's already got the fusing on the back. And then the centre of my pod, which I've shown on the pattern no, somewhere in, in the diagram um, as a little stripey thing, and as the pattern, the fabrics that I'm using this time actually are pretty much plain fabrics, although they've got that lovely shot um, colour through them, uh, I thought a, a stripe would be quite nice. So what I've done to create the stripe is I've cut my actual shape out of the dark coloured fabric, and then I cut a strip with the iron-on fusible on the back of it, three quarters of an inch wide. The pattern will tell you this, but I'll just quickly show you. And then I, so I've just ironed on short lengths of that strip three quarters of an inch apart so that it kind of looks like an even stripe, not a stripe at all. It's a created stripe. Um, so we would then position that and then I've got my outer part of my pod. Now to position that bit of the pod, I'll just take the fusing off the back, we probably need just to have a quick look with this outer bit sitting over the top there to make sure it's sitting where we want it with the stem and that it's coming out sitting with with the top of the pod again on that seam line so you've got something to line up with here so just for position sake I'll just pop that there I'm going to just iron that center bit so there's a little bit of a gap above the stem and that's because of the covering with the pod shape I'm just going to iron that in place now And then there's another little top knot coming out the top. I know you know how to do all this, but I just thought we'd quickly go through all this. Now that little top knot actually has to sit a little bit higher up than I've got it, because that top of the pod is quite tall. But again, following that seam line, um, 
so that it kind of covers the seam. So if you're using different colored fabrics um, for the background rather than just the one like I have, that would be great. My pod is longer than my ironing mat. Um, so I'm just going to iron this top bit on here now. Again, making sure that's sitting nicely. And I'll, I'm going to go away and sew all these very shortly. But how exciting is this to see this garden growing? Now, the, right at the top there, it has a little top knot for some obscure reason, but it appealed at the time. And then I noticed yet another little creature in my little garden. I've got this little mouth shape here. Now on the pattern he's got a tail, but we can't really pop the tail on like at the moment. We'll do the tail a bit later. But we can iron him in place. So he's actually running up the stem of the pod. And the little details of the ears and things, you can stitch all those as you're doing the applique and they come up quite nicely. So that's how it's going to look. I'll just hold that up so that you can get an idea that that pod is now filling in some of the gap in my garden. Um, and I'll just quickly show you, because I've got, got these plain fabrics and I've created that stripe on my other colourway that I'm making, rather than make a stripe for that because I'm using pattern fabrics, for my pod I found this delicious fabric with all these different coloured dots on. So I've got a plainer outer part of the pod and it's going to have those nice coloured dots running up the centre rather than the stripe that I've made. Oops. Anyway, you'll see it when it's on there and I've stitched it and I'll show you that part as well. So that's just an idea for using some different fabrics. I just thought I'd mention that. So I'm off to stitch. I'll see you shortly. So I've been busy, busy sewing, sewing and growing, growing my garden that is. So here I've got my roses all beautifully stitched on. Well, I don't know about beautifully stitched, but the fabrics are very beautiful in these lovely oak shot fabrics. But as I've been going on your pattern, you'll see that there's like a little swirly bit that indicates the center of the rose. And I've managed to stitch that with the straight stitching as I've gone on the center of my roses on this one. And I've got this happy little ladybug trying to climb up the stem, but he hasn't got any feet yet, so it doesn't make it too easy. Um, and, and I've done it in the other colorway as well. So again, the roses and the ladybug. Now I haven't done that center swirl bit inside the center part of the roses because I was using the blanket stitch for the applique and it didn't seem such a good idea to do the blanket stitch. So I'll come back and do that at a later time. So that's the panel for this month. So a lovely rose panel. But we also had that other bit of applique that we were doing where we were joining up parts one and two panels and doing the pod. So I've managed to get that all stitched as well. So here we have parts one and two joined together with a pod. How exciting is that? Um, so I'm really pleased with the way that's come up with those stripes that I created with the um, fabrics. And I've got the butterfly flapping around up the top there. And it's all looking pretty good. And I'll show you also in the other colorway, just so that you get an idea of different fabrics and things. And we've got this cheeky little mouse, of course, coming up the little stem of the pod there. And this wonderfully colourful centre of our pod on this one here. So that's it for this part. We've got parts one, two joined together with a pod. And then we've got part three panel ready to go and to put aside for, for work on it later on. So that's the end of part three. Have fun and we'll see you with your garden growing next month.